Hello everyone, welcome to this special CUBE conversation where we're going to unpack and have a casual conversation around the big news that VMware just announced, vSphere 7.0 or vSphere 7. Chris Prasad, Senior Vice President, General Manager of vSphere, um, Cloud Platform Business Unit, Paul Turner, VP, vSphere Product Manager. Guys, we just chatted about the big news. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, the bottom line, if I'm a customer, uh, I'm moving into the cloud, I see this as really an, either an enabler or a blocker. You guys actually think it's an enabler. Um, I'm not saying it's a blocker, but as a customer, I just need to know, is it going to help me go faster? I'm going cloud, which means I've been told I got to get on the cloud. I got Amazon, I might have Azure or multiple clouds. With workloads sitting around, I got to pull them all together and make them work. But right now I just got to get my operations mm -hmm. cloud native. Yeah. This is so, really kind of the pressure point. Oh, for sure. Well, it, one of the biggest drivers that you see happen in the industry right now is Kubernetes. Why, why is Kubernetes taking off? Kubernetes is taking off because it gives you cloud independence. It gives you the ability to run with the same operating model, whether it's in Google Cloud, Amazon's Cloud, Microsoft Cloud, or any other cloud service. What we're doing with version seven is we're actually bringing that same Kubernetes cloud independent operating model directly into vSphere. So now all of your infrastructure platforms that are out there, 90% of IT environments, are all Kubernetes ready platforms. And that's really powerful. So what we've done is just taken a, a totally different kind of uh, um, uh, uh, scope on how cloud should be. Cloud should be any cloud. Uh, it should be independent of one particular flavor of it. Um, and developers should be able to work then uh, in a much more agile way. You know, it's interesting, I've been following VMware for all my career since it was founded. And you know, with the CUBE coverage over the years, it's interesting to see the innovation. You guys do a lot of great stuff. Of course, Wikibon, our team, Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante, made some good calls with v vSAN. Uh, we saw the early stuff with vCloud Air, kind of saw that kind of going in its direction. But there's been real innovation going on around you guys, obviously with NSX has exploded and vSphere has been kind of the, the core thing. As you guys look at the, um, the cloud model, you guys made some good moves with Amazon. I've always felt that you guys could be that Switzerland, that, that layer of connection points between as enterprise really move from old way of provisioning to much more seamless operating model where they got to deal with cybersecurity, they got to deal with all this stuff. And that's going to come from apps. That's going to come from the apps. So when you bought Heptio, I was like, hmm, that's actually a really smart move. You're starting to bring in that cloud native vibe into vSphere. Into vSphere, mm -hmm. yes. That's what's essentially happening here, isn't it? Oh, exactly. This is like the, the coming out party for that, right? It's uh, vSphere having all the Heptio goodness embedded in it. And what you would see is that because we have such a huge presence in the uh, on-prem space, this provides the fastest path for customers to get to the cloud. So today, I mean, at this, I don't want this point to be lost, John. The, today, you know, we are running the same VMware Cloud Foundation on-prem, on Amazon, in Google, and many other- Same code major, base. Same code base, right? It's the exact same thing. So now, what does that give you as a customer? It gives you the same operational model across all these clouds. Because customers today, without that, they are setting up a set of processes and tools for Amazon. Then you go to Azure, you're doing a different set and you're training people to do that, right? And, and you know, you could get into compliance and other issues where things fall through the cracks, right, when you do that. Here you have the same platform, you set your policies once, it applies to all the clouds. You can move your workloads between clouds, right? It's vMotion essentially. We're doing all the yeah, clouds. There's been a lot of skeptics right? on that one, but that's ideal, would be perfect. We will do it today. I mean, it, it is happening today. And we have thousands of other partners, which are the, the tier two service providers who are all, also offering that. So we have a huge web of these providers on which we run the same platform. Yeah, I want to add something else actually to that as well, which is this is an open platform, which is really powerful, right? This is based on Kubernetes for developers which means you, know, you can run on the vSphere platform and that is a hybrid infrastructure that is the most ubiquitous infrastructure out there. But if you actually want to take your application and actually deploy it onto a native, native cloud, you can do that as well. Um, and so it's very important for us to keep the platform open 
while making it yeah. the broadest available. Well, DevOps is, I mean, first of all, I totally agree. I think open wins, but at the end of the day, I think this operating consistency is a big story yeah. because, I mean, it's kind of like nuanced, but it's, it, it is really the most important thing customers care about because if you're operating successfully seamlessly across cloud, it's better. So the question I have on the DevOps side, because the dream has always been infrastructure as code. Mm -hmm. So are you guys there with this? Do you consider this vSphere 7 kind of infrastructure as code? If I'm a developer, is it all being taken care of? How close are we in your mind's eye to uh, infrastructure as code? No, it's 100% uh, there. I mean, we made the uh, announcement around Tanzu, which is a set of uh, other products and capabilities that we add to what vSphere has. And that whole stack and the solution is what is targeted at the modern developer. So we have all the capabilities that the developers need to do infrastructure as code, to deploy their applications, and deploy it across all these clouds. And I want to I want to add to that that um, infrastructure as code really has two parts to it. We look at how do I provide the developers infrastructure as code, which is what we're doing with Kubernetes enablement. And we have our vSAN product is available. In fact, all storage services from vSphere are available through that. And our NSX services are available through Kubernetes. So you've got full infrastructure as code for developers. But infrastructure as code also means how do you deploy large scale infrastructures and manage them as code? How do people actually manage the operations and the deployment of services? And so your IT and your admin team actually have a full layer of enhanced lifecycle management, uh, provisioning of, of configurations and settings across infrastructure, all of that is now managed as uh, in. Yeah, that, that's almost under the hood kind of stuff, but yeah. it's important because networking is going to play a big role Correct. in all this, mm -hmm. from a security standpoint, and also co compute and storage pretty much looking, looking good, but networking becomes a huge part of what's under the hood. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, networking is what enables us to connect all these clouds together, right? And NSX being the the underlying platform for us enables us to have one single layer across all these clouds with the same operating model. So NSX is very critical for this. I want to get your guys' thoughts on some little history lesson here, or scar tissue, as we say in the industry. You know, I remember back during the Hadoop days, um, 2010, the big data movement hit, and it was just going to save us all, right? It's going to be great. But what ended up happening was just very hard to stand up these clusters. And what happened was the commitment the vision was there, but it was just really hard to manage and stand up clusters and hire people to do this. So it, it, it had some use cases, but it just really kind of fell down. We saw OpenStack have a similar trajectory where good on, on paper, things had use cases, but it was just so hard to manage. The trends were moving very, very fast. Cloud was here. The cloud computing kind of took everyone by storm and just got rid of all those things. And so they ended up kind of dying. No, but uh, if, you, if you think about why OpenStack didn't go anywhere in the end, it's because of the operational complexity, right? It took a lot to set it up, and you had to essentially invest a lot more in keeping it running, right? And then what we are doing is saying, you don't have to worry about that aspect because it's built into the platform that you already know, right? So we have taken that complexity out completely. And so you just have vSphere, the administrators know how to set up and run and do lifecycle on vSphere, and you get Kubernetes. With so it. back to my original question, if that's the case, which by the way, I think that's the way to think about it, yeah. then if I'm the customer, the acceleration, I can draft up with the movement of cloud as fast as I can go. Right. Versus fastest, having any kind of blockers. Fastest right. ramp to the cloud. Fastest ramp to the cloud, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And fastest, fastest ramp to a cloud operating model which means that all of your developers can now actually run as quickly as they can, building their applications independent of IT in a much more dynamic way. So you want to move to that cloud operating model. That's why Kubernetes is so important. On the infrastructure side, we've actually, of course, made it a much easier platform to manage, but, but it's the agility that matters. You guys have done some great innovation. I think you've um, got a good ear to the market, made some good moves, looking good. This is a great vision. I got to get your guys' take on um, the, the edge. Big discussion, 5G, certain areas love that kind of vision, but at the end of the day, an edge now, if you're talking about cloud operations, everything's an edge, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, what does edge mean for vSphere? How do you guys look at the, the edge of the network and as these applications, whether it's sensors or whatever, happening at the edges, how does vSphere look at that? How do you guys look at yeah, that? Yeah, so, uh, for let me just, uh, I would say that, you know, we, we have a data center edge, 
right? Which is, uh, think of it as um, retail stores, you know, Starbucks, right? They, they have a kind of a mini data center application running there, right? That's one kind of edge that people talk about. Then you have the kind of the telco edge, where a lot of the processing of the 5G data is happening, right? Where the cell towers are and whatnot. And then you have the device edge, which is the cars, the, you know, what do you have at home and whatnot, right? And then, and we can play across all of these because we have the platform. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, vSphere yeah. as a platform is, uh, is embedded in many devices today. It's in the army, it's uh, in parking meters, it's in, so it has a form factor that can live in all these devices. We certainly play in the data center. So we are well suited to play at the so edge. So vSphere anywhere is yeah, kind of the strategy. That, yeah, that is exactly our strategy. Well, I think we're already we're already at the the data center edge, as we've talked yeah. about. That's a, it's a very common deployment use case for earlier versions of vSphere, and it will continue to be. Uh, it's not new to you guys. It's at all. not not new at all. I, I think the telco edge is actually a very interesting one, particularly with the five G switchover. So you know what's happening there is there's a whole you know radio access networks, and you're looking at the VRAN as a big initiative there which is how do we bring virtualization as a service there into, into those networks. Container deployments becomes very important as well. So we actually have a platform with version seven that actually can give uh, the telco edge and 5G network deployments a much more secure, predictable runtime environment. So that's really powerful as well. And it's containers and VMs, because many of those applications that are deployed at telco edge are container-based applications. It's interesting, you know, we talk about stacks in the, our last segment, and you guys talking about the news and not having all these stacks laying around, but if you think about the, the, the evolution of the industry with cloud, a whole new sets of services are emerging. You mentioned Telco Edge, so it just looks different, but it's the same kind of open model mm -hmm. that Open Systems brought us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just a little bit different. It's a distributed, cloud's a distributed computer. Yeah. It's just same concepts, new, new capabilities. Now, just to add to that, I mean, the biggest innovation, John, is happening in the hardware layer, right? The, the, the computers are getting disaggregated, right? There is a lot of acceleration that is going on. There are specialized chips, ASICs, FPGAs that are being built into these servers. And, and memory is getting pulled outside because the interconnect is getting fast enough for those things to happen. And so a lot of the innovation that we do as a platform that we didn't talk about much today is really at that layer because we have to virtualize all of that and provide it to the developers. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's a great architecture. I think I just add more of the complexity that's coming that you guys can help abstract away is you know, just looking at cybersecurity and the role of data, mm -hmm. you got to get in front of all these these trends to get that automation DevOps going because without any automation and software, it's just people can't handle the inbounds. I mean, it's a big problem. Yeah, you, you, you really need um, uh, your platforms to provide intrinsic security. Uh, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be an option. It shouldn't be something that the developers need to worry about. It should be something that's just part of the platform. And and that's one of the things that we see is is critical, and actually built into vSphere Seven. Um, and you've seen that we've made a number of acquisitions recently, actually in the security piece. It's it's so that we can purposely build into your your runtime environment, which is your VM environment and your container environment that we are running. We actually build in. Uh, intrinsic security, we build in uh, uh, dynamic uh, uh, checking of uh, the, the scope of an application in real time uh, um, uh, while those applications are running, which is very key. Well, Paul, thanks for sharing all that great stuff. I want to get one final thought for both of you before we wrap up is, we've been seeing and we've been reporting kind of the three waves of the cloud. Mm -hmm. Wave one was public. We all kind of know how that turned out. It's awesome, cloud native, born in the cloud. Wave two is where we're at now with a lot of intensity hybrid, and that's got a range of definitions. And then the third wave that's coming fast is multi-cloud. So I want to get your thoughts on hybrid. A lot of energy, a lot of spend, a lot of dollars, uh, investment in, in hard costs and people in hybrid. Uh, I know we have different definitions. There's also different versions of hybrid. How do you define hybrid? And how does that become a path to the next wave? Or is it a path to the next wave? What's your take on Oh, it's absolutely the path to the next wave. I, I would say the hybrid, in our view, is the same platform running on whichever cloud you want to choose, right? And our platform, as we talked about, spans all the major clouds today, giving the same operating model, and that's what we view as the hybrid cloud story. 
right? The next one is the ability to mix native cloud workloads and services with that. And we already have a set of products and services that target that. It's the Tansu portfolio that I talked about is all focused on the multi-cloud uh, journey. So yeah. we kind of uh, support both and we are looking forward and aggressively going after the multi-cloud. I think it's important to think of them as, as completely complementary of each other, right? A hybrid infrastructure platform is so the, you know, a single IT organization can actually have one operating experience for their entire infrastructure, independent of cloud, private cloud, public cloud services. But multi-cloud is about developers. It's about developers able to deploy their applications on any cloud environment that they need to and they don't need to worry about infrastructure. So hybrid cloud is really about a hybrid infrastructure that we can deploy everywhere. Multi-cloud and the services that we're providing to developers is all about how you can be independent of any cloud deployment that you want. It could be a hybrid infrastructure you deploy on, it could be on a standard public cloud service. Yeah. And what's interesting is not, not, all, not all clouds are created equal. I mean, Amazon has much more capabilities than Azure mm -hmm. and Google, but they're finding right. their swim lanes. But again, yeah. it's all about the workload. The workload right. decides which cloud to work on, and That's right. you guys just are agnostic yes. for the offering model. Yeah. Well, thanks for the insight, guys. Appreciate you uh, doing a little post wrap of the news. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for sharing. Thank you. Big news, vSphere 7, Cube Breakdown here. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. <laughs>